Hey YouTube, welcome to day 11 of my 14 day challenge. I am in the home stretch now. First off, I wanna say shout out to Miss Eileen. She sent a, or posted a question on the video from yesterday and asked about my setup. And I thought, funny you should ask, cause that's what I'm doing the video on today. We're right here, girl. We're right here. So let's start with what I use to record my video. So for this challenge, I am sitting in front of my iMac. I bought this two years ago. This was actually a gift for myself for having a good month with Merch by Amazon. And you guys, I'm not one of those Mac users that's like anti Windows. I used Windows and Mac for a long time, like simultaneously. If you might remember my older videos, I had a Windows computer behind me and then I switched to the Mac. But even when I was using Windows, I had been using my MacBook Pro as my travel la laptop. So anytime I travel, I always have that with me. So I was very familiar with Mac when I did the switch over to the iMac. But I have to say, there are certain things that I do miss about Windows. It's funny how people are so territorial over Mac versus Windows. I'm like, they're just machines. Like why are people so doggone defensive over which one's better? I think they both have pluses and minuses, you know, if I'm honest. But one thing I like about this setup, and this is why you see more videos here now, is it's just more convenient. And one of the things with consistency on YouTube with me, I have to make it easy for myself because one of the things I've learned through this challenge, I underestimated how much work I was putting into editing and, and doing videos. And I don't even really have these super, super high caliber videos, but it takes time to do these videos. And if I'm gonna have some videos that, you know, look fairly decent, I have to make it easy to start recording. If I have to set up the camera, get the lighting right and all that stuff, all I have to do to record is sit down in my chair, open my software and hit record. And this makes it easy. So that's why you've been seeing a lot of videos from this vantage point. Okay, what mic do I use? I use, as I'm sure a lot of you already can tell by seeing it, I use the Blue Yeti USB mic. This is the one thing I wanna change. I've had this mic for, I guess it's going on six years now. And the thing I hate about this mic the most is that it is super, super sensitive. If you just listen for a second, you can probably hear my thoughts. <laughs> this thing is so sensitive. Even though I have this filter on here, I still get plosives. I, if you've noticed, I always have the mic kind of off to the side a little bit because I found that keeps me from having those plosives. And I'm just, I'm just ready for something different. It's too, too sensitive. Now, when I travel, sometimes I'm recording my podcast in a different location and I have a Audio Technica mic. I'll have to put up the, the model because I don't remember off the top of my head. I like that mic a little better because it's a little less sensitive and the sound is just a little richer. I've never fully been happy with this sound. I never have. And if anybody has suggestions for a better mic, I am all ears. I've also never really been able to get that, that rich sound that a lot of people have. And maybe it's because I'm using the USB instead of, what is the other one called? See, I'm, I'm, I'm not an audio person, clearly. So if anybody has suggestions, I welcome them. I am not an audio professional and, and I don't mind splurging a little bit if it's gonna get me some better, richer sound. So please put suggestions in the comments if you have them. What I think is cool though about the Blue Yetis now is that they come in all these different colors. I have the silver and that's all they had when I bought mine in, in 2013. But as you can see, they have a lot of different colors now. But I would love to get that rich sound that some people have. I just don't know how to do it, if I'm honest. Uh, but this is also the mic that I use on my podcast as well. Now, this is my newer purchase. I bought this about a year ago. This is the Rode PSA Swivel Mount Studio Microphone Boom Arm. This comes in handy so much for recording videos like this, doing my podcast, because when I'm done working or done recording, I can just swing this right on out the way. Now, there are cheaper options out there, you guys. One of the reasons I chose this one is I was looking at one of the cheaper options, but this guy here on YouTube, I think his name is Randy. Shout out to Randy, thank you so much. I watched his video and he made it look so easy putting all this together. And as you can see, he's using the shock mount. Um, I also have the shock mount, so he shows you how to put everything together. I love the fact that you don't have to drill a hole into your desk, it just sort of fits on the side. But his video is what encouraged me to get this set up. Some of the other cheaper products that I was reading online, the reviews weren't that good. 
at all. And that made me nervous, but the reviews for this were really good. And one thing that really drew me to this was that it's very, very sturdy. And it is, and I've had this for about a year now and I love it. So the other thing I had to get because I have the PSA one road boom arm is you need a shock mount for the Blue Yeti. So this is what my Blue Yeti sits on. This thing looks very industrial. If you're looking for something sexy, this is not it. This thing is not attractive at all, but it's very flexible and it's functional. And thankfully you don't see this in any of my videos. You just see the microphone, but it's not pretty. But yeah, you can turn it to the left, to the right, so you can get it just right for the positioning of your mouth. So if you have a Blue Yeti and you wanna use a boom arm, you might wanna consider getting a shock mount. You don't have to have a shock mount. The Blue Yeti will actually fit on the arm without it, but I just wanted one because that's what Randy did in his video and I wanted to be like Randy. So. <laughs> so that's what I use for my mic and my boom arm. I also have a pop filter on the Blue Yeti because it's so sensitive, but it doesn't always work. And this is not, you know, like the cheap ones either. I mean, the first one I had was like, I don't know, $8. So someone said, you know, no, get the one for 20. It'll be better. I still have issues with the popping sounds, the plosives, even with the screen on. So again, if anybody has suggestions, I welcome them. This is the one part of my setup I really would like to change. Now, as far as editing software, it does not matter if I'm recording from my couch, my bedroom, that little chair. Sometimes you would see me in that little brown chair. That's like the corner chair in my bedroom. Or if I'm recording here, I always use Camtasia to edit my videos. A lot of people uh, look at Camtasia as just a screen recording software editor, but you can edit any kind of videos in there. And that's what I love about it. I've been using Camtasia since 2008. Now, obviously I started with Windows, but now I'm using the Mac version. But you can do everything with this software. It's not necessarily the easiest to learn, but I've been using it for so long, I'm just used to it. So even in the video where you saw me doing that little cheesy animation, <laughs> that was so cheesy. I did that in Camtasia. So if you wanna do like animated intros for your videos and stuff like that, you can actually do that in Camtasia. Once you learn the animation feature of the software, you can really, really do a lot of things. So every single video that you see me do, it doesn't matter where I'm recording, I always edit in Camtasia just because that's, that's my comfort zone. Now, I know you see this hefty price tag here. It is expensive, but they've come down. I think I paid 300 for the Windows version back in 08, but when I changed over to my iMac, they gave me a $99 upgrade and that gives you two licenses. So I have one license here on my iMac and then I have another license on my MacBook for travel. I love the picture in a picture thing that Camtasia does and it makes it very convenient for editing. So they put the video of me from the webcam on one track and then they put the screen recording on another track so I can edit them independently. So you might see me moving myself up and then back down, but the screen recording stays still. So there's a lot of flexibility once you really learn how to use the software. Now the background you see in my videos where you see me writing on the chalkboard, that's also done in Camtasia. So I just get an image of a chalkboard that's the same size as the resolution I'm recording in, which is 1920 by 1080. And I just put that into Camtasia and overlay the text on top of it. Don't sleep on Camtasia, you guys. However, I will say this, there are so many more less expensive options out there. I am not the person to look to if you're just looking for like the best bang for your buck. I just use what I'm comfortable with. And when I find something that I like, like Camtasia, I stick to it. Now for the music, sometimes I'll have a little beat playing in the background or whatever. I use Audio Jungle. Now, of course, YouTube now has music that you can use for free. But one thing I've noticed is that you hear some of the same tunes all the time. And I don't personally mind paying for some loops because I have found that when you use free sites other than YouTube, a lot of times those things are not really royalty free, even if they say that they are. And in Vato Market slash Audio Jungle, they're a little bit more reputable. Plus you get to support some independent artists and stuff like that, which I like to do. The other thing I like about this site is the filters. So for example, if I'm looking for a piano loop, but if I wanna sort by, let's just say length. So if I want something between one second and 10 seconds, then I can sort and then it'll only show me things that fit that requirement. 
Although I don't know why I'm saying something for six minutes here. That's not what I said. But anyway, but yeah, you can search by a lot of different things. So over here on the vocals, they have background vocals, vocal samples, instrumental, lead vocals. You can sort by tempo. So I like this because you can really take the time to find something specific that you need. And I haven't found a site that I really like with the sorting and filter features like this has. So yeah, the bottom line is this is just the most convenient setup that I've ever had. It makes it easy for me to record. And if I'm gonna do videos regularly, like I said, I have to make it easy. So if you have any questions about my setup or suggestions, I welcome suggestions. I also wanna emphasize that just because I am saying this is what I use, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is what you should use, especially if you're a beginner or if you're on a budget, because there are definitely some cheaper ways to get things done, but this is just, what I like to use. So thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.